Indian summer. Hello, I'm Tom Cleaver of Mr. Cleaver's Monsters, and I'm here for an Indian summer festival. I have the pleasure of being here today to talk you through making a puppet I designed. It is a Bengal tiger, which is one of the most ferocious, fascinating animals out there. I'll tell you more about it later. Right, we're going to do a couple of different strategies for this. We will have uh, things that you need to do, a very basic one, but then also because we're under lockdown conditions, you might not be able to get hold of everything. So I'll talk you through different things and different materials that you can use to achieve what you want. Yeah, achieve a result. So a very kind of like basic thing, the first thing that you need are your sheets. And these are downloadable in the Indian Summer Festival online resource pack. And we'll stick up a link for that and you can download that from there. You will need your body and your limbs. Then we'll also need things for cutting out, assembling, your kind of whatever stuff. So for that pair of scissors, obviously, we need a way of joining our body parts together. So for that, we have these little paper fasteners. And then you'll need a way of holding up your puppet and then manipulating it. So you need something which is stick shaped. So in this case, I've got kebab skewers. If you can't get kebab skewers, then there are little pea sticks for gardening, or you can also use straws. Straws are a little bit short, but again, I'll show you a way of working around that. And yeah, we shall overcome. So the very first thing you've got to do is you need your sheets here. In your absolute ideal world, you would print them out onto thin cardboard. And cardboard is measured in thicknesses called GSM, grams per square meter. Not everybody has the ability to print onto cardboard. So what I suggest is if you can't do that and you can't print it on nice 140-ish GSM cardboard, I would suggest print it off onto paper and then just use a glue stick and glue it onto something like a cereal box. Again, that 140 GSM-ish paper cardboard stuff. And yeah, get it on, get it onto your cardboard. And then as you can well imagine, that's when we get scissors out. Okay, so I'm gonna spare you cutting out all these bits. In true time-honored fashion, here are some bits that I've made earlier. So I'll bring those over here. Assemble them before me. Two arms, we don't need that. And you'll notice that lots of these things have these little holes in. Now these are the parts where you put your pivots in. And what these are paper fasteners and they act as a pivot point that your limbs can move around. Now, in an ideal world, you get lovely small little paper fasteners like this. They are really difficult to get a hold of these days. So you might end up with massive ones like this. These are fairly easy to get hold of. In fact, a very large DIY chain that rhymes with Bilco sells these. So if you don't know, that's where they're from. No product placement here. <laughs> so what we do is we get our pieces and we need to poke holes in them. So the best thing you can do is get some of this sticky tack stuff. Pop that on your table. Position your piece on top and then get your pointy pokey thing, stick it in and give it a twizzle. And you kind of, you want to make the hole the same dimension as the little white circle there. The little white circle is sl just slightly wider than the blades on your paper fastener. And the reason for that is just so it's got a bit of grip. Okay, so every time you see a little white circle, pop a hole in it. So if you just bear with me a second, I will do that. So we're doing our shoulder hole in the tiger. And then we also, we have a jaw hole just there. And that's quite close to the edge of the paper, so be fairly careful there. And then somewhere, yeah, we got a tail. So decide where you want to start. And uh, for the sake of argument, let's go with the four limbs. Right then, I'm sure you all know how a paper fastener works, but just in case you haven't come across them, essentially it's a little piece of metal with two prongs that you can move apart. So if we can, I don't know if we can close up on that. You can see that? And what we're going to do is have it pinched together. And then, for our four limbs, what we're going to do is we're going to position them onto his shoulders. So what we do is we take our front leg, our front forelimb, 
you're going to feed it through that hole just one at a time make it easy for yourself just do it one at a time and through the shoulder hole and then through the back now you'll realize you'll understand that this is the back because it has this light colored fur and on a bengal bengal tiger well it's light colored fur is on the underside of its arms so just remember that and you'll be fine pop that in if i hold this up to the camera you'll see that those two prongs are sticking out through the other side of the cardboard and what we're going to do is take the tip of your finger and then push down from that way if you push down that way you'll go ow because it's pointy so push down slightly from the side and fold those over and that very simply secures it in place so then you've got your arms and legs there and there's enough friction here if it's folded over to hold it in place when you position it we'll do the same with the back legs so remember the majority of the orange goes on the outside and goes on the front of the animal the white bits go on the underside so we're going to take another one of our split pins one piece at a time We'll feed it through the hip, feed it through the tiger's bum. We'll pop his back leg on, and then we're also going to pop his tail on. So just like with the other bits, we stack it up, we pop the tail on, push it inside, fold the pin over. We should now have a jaw. And somewhere on this table, we will have a tongue. So we have a tongue and we have our jaw. They're quite small, quite fiddly. They might be a bit tricky to cut out, but again, just be patient. Take your time and everything should be good. So we take our blue tack again, our generic sticky tack, I should say, and we pop holes into the jaw and into the tongue. Let's see where's our paper files now. Now, trying to hold this so you can see it. Jaw goes in front. Paper fastener goes through. Through the head. And then the tongue goes in the background. Open up a fastener. And we have, once it's positioned in the right place, we have the mouth. Now at this point, I just want to explain what happens if you end up with some of these massive paper fasteners. So let's take the jaw one out, pop one of these massive ones in, see what that might look like and see what you can do about it. You may notice there's a great big hunk of metal sticking out the back of our tiger and when we use him as a shadow puppet it'll look kind of like he's got a spear sticking through his head. This is not ideal. So what we can do to remedy that is to take our paper fastener and just to fold it in on itself like this. I don't know if you're, you're catching this so I'll move my hands out of the way. We're taking the tips of the fastener and we're just bending it in on itself. It's also a good idea to do this if you've got little ones because these are quite pokey, they're quite pointy. And if you're doing a performance, you don't really want to be catching your fingers on it. Now at this point, I think we're doing quite well. Everything's gone together and you can have a lot of fun just wiggling them around and stuff. But if you want to make him perform, you've got to put him on some kind of stick. The simplest thing you can do is just use one stick. So we'll start with that. Now, if you're using a kebab skewer, kebab skewers are, by their very nature, they're pointy. That's and a big pointy thing in the hands of little people. It's kind of asking for trouble. So you need to do something about that spike there. You can, you can wrap the spike in a bit of tape, that'll blunt it. You can cut the end off it. If you are snipping the tips off your kebab skewer, point it away from yourself because it'll fly. Quite lucky then usually it will find its way into your eye but on this occasion we'd be fine. okay so the best place to put your stick is in its center of gravity or if you less technical term is its angle of dangle that's where it balances from so if you find roughly where that is this is about there we will take our stick and just use a little bit of tape on it 
I'm just using masking tape here because I'm going to take it off in a minute. I'll show you some other stuff, but masking tape, because it's repositionable, it's kind of groovy. So there you go, that's your simple construction. You can start wiggling it about, you can start you start thinking what kind of personality your tiger's got. Is he inquisitive? Is he aggressive? Is he shy? Is he going to back away from people? Now, if I take this off, that's your simplest method of attaching it, and that's good. Nice and simple, gets the job done quicker. But what we want to do is we want to think about your performance and how can you add just something a little bit more lively to it. So what we're going to do is we are going to do a little bit of very, very basic engineering here. We're going to fold up your pins and we're going to tape two sticks and we're going to attach them to the paper fasteners. Now again, pointiness, we don't need that. So we're going to point it away, snip the end off and then what we're going to do and this one actually is easier with the bigger paper fasteners, but hey, we're where we are now anyway. So pop a little bit of tape around the end of your kebab skewer, and then tape it to the paper fastener itself. You may find that you have to bend the paper fastener and then bend it back into position. The thing you need to make sure of is that you're attached to the paper fastener and not to the cardboard. And we're gonna do the same thing with the front fastener. So again, kebab skewer, little bit of tape. Pop that around there. Fold it forward if you can't get your fingers around the back. And make sure everything is nice and tight. Now I am using masking tape here. So there's every chance that when I hold it up, it's gonna fall off again. I'm gonna look really stupid, but hey, that's the risk we take. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But what happens with two sticks is we can start to puppeteer it a little more. We've got that forward, back, up and down motion. And with this, you can start to explore your tiger's personality even more. Because a big, brave animal, it might rear up. If it's shy, if it's timid, it might lower its head. It can scamper in to meet another character like this. You can sit down. If you are going to sit him, I'd suggest maybe repositioning the legs a little bit. But the two sticks just gives you that greater option with your performance. Don't forget, you can also demonstrate your tiger's mood with his tail. Animals carry lots of or display lots of their behaviour in their tail. If the tail is down, then they're usually quite cautious, quite shy or quite scared. If the tail's up in a dog, dog's happy. Obviously, this is a tiger, so they can use tail as a kind of light display of being unhappy. This is also the point where I suggest you make loud roaring noises as well. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this may fall off. If it does, you can just slide it back on. You might want to use sellotape or gaffer, something with a bit more stick, or even like a dob of glue, something like a hot glue gun. But hey, experiment, see what works for you. Now, I did mention that you might not, because of lockdown conditions, be able to get a hold of kebab sticks or this kind of stuff. Can use straws. The straws are quite nifty because you can insert the whole paper fastener in them, especially if you've got these fatter ones. You'll find those fit in with a bit of tape around them to fatten them up, they stick better. But these are quite short. So, what you can do is if you snip the end off that and another one. You can then put a little slit, maybe about two or three centimetres down your straw, and then that will allow you to insert it into the other straw, and then you can extend it, and you can do that for great big lengths like that. Eventually the weight will get so much it bends, but you'll be absolutely cool with stuff like that. I'm going to switch out to the one here. 
that's the thing with this way of building things is that if something doesn't work first time, you can take it apart, you can modify it, you can make it your own. So here, I've swapped out with the big pin. I'm gonna insert it into there, but I need something for the tape to actually adhere to. So we need to expose just a little bit of this brass pin, maybe about sort of a centimeter. And we are going to fold that over there and then wrap that around nice and tight. Make sure you get the squish on the brass because that's what you need. That's where your, where your contact is, that's where it adheres. So again, using your straw, you've got those two pivot points and you can puppeteer from there. So I think what we might do now is we're going to set up a projection screen. We realise that not everybody's going to have a projection screen, so I'll talk you through a few alternative options and a few things you can do. And we'll also, yeah, we'll muck around with some sources of illumination, some torches. And yeah, OK, we'll see you in a minute. At this point, you've got your tiger puppet and now it's time to try it out. So you're going to need a light source. We've got quite a nice overhead projector, an OHP from an old school that I found many years ago. Kind of hard to get hold of, but you could use a torch or if you get hold of some kind of lamp or lantern, anything that can throw light forward, then you're gonna need a screen. And we're quite lucky we have what they call a rear projection screen. Not everybody's gonna have one of those. So you could use a thin sheet, also shower curtains work very well. They're thick enough to project on, but also thin enough to let the light go through. So you have your light source behind you and you need your puppet in front of the light source but behind the screen. Now a few things about focusing. The closer you are towards the screen the sharper your image will get. The further away you are the fuzzier it will get but the bigger it will be. Now you can use that for some quite interesting effects because you can do most of your performance here but if you want to say you have a creature that suddenly massively increases in size you can go towards the light source and then for it to shrink down, move it away. Closer to the screen, you'll be in focus and that's where you want the majority of things to happen. Now there are a few little tricks you can do. Certainly in real life a tiger will be quite a stealthy animal and because this is essentially flat, you can do little things like turn it on its edge. So if you had a piece of scenery, maybe a tree or something, and you wanted your tiger to suddenly appear, you could have it edge on and then vroomph, there's your tiger. Perfect for sneaking up on people. So think about your tiger's behaviour, how does it move? You're sort of limited to a degree because you've only got two sticks, then you've only got two hands. So think about how it might bound along. Is he big and brave? Is he small and timid? So once you've experimented with your tiger's behaviour a bit, you can try it out with different backgrounds. And we have this one. Which is a spooky jungle scene, perfect for our tiger to explore. So that was our Bengal Tiger Puppet Workshop. Hope you have a lot of fun making it. You'll find the resources that you need in the Indian Summer Activity Pack, and you'll find the information online, our social media, Indian Summer website. Thank you very much. Cheers.